All right, everybody, welcome back. We're going to do another tutorial today, and uh, we're going to do a snow scene. So I thought that would be fun. And also, we're going to mix it up. We're going to use New Pastel, which are these right here, and then Paul Rubens on top of the New Pastels. So um, I'm going to do the first layers with the New Pastel, then we'll put a workable fix of it, fixative over that, and then we'll finish off the painting just using only the Paul Rubens oil pastel. Okay, and um, paper we're going to use for this is Clairefontaine Pastel Mat. That's what's up here. And down here I have the cover for it. If you're interested in trying this paper out, I highly recommend it. It is still my favorite overall paper to use for not only pastels, but also just oil pastels. It is a little spendy, um, but it's well worth the price. You get, um, how many sheets? You get 12 of them. 12 sheets and rough size of these is 12 by five and a half inches. It's more like 11 and three quarters inch by 15, 15 and 15.5 inches. Um, so it's kind of an odd size, um, but you get 12 of them. And you also get included is these um, glassine sheets in between each paper, which helps you protect your work when you're all done with it. So in between each Paper is a piece of glassine paper, so that's nice. So yeah, I got this on Amazon, um, and it is spendy. Actually, I got it at dickblick.com. It is spendy. We're talking probably close to $70 for just this pad here. Um, so it's not something I, I, I use a lot. I used to use it quite a bit, but it is expensive. Um, but still, it is my favorite paper. It absorbs a lot of pastel which I like. Okay, so that's the paper we're using. And here is the scene we're gonna paint. I decided I want a real thick, heavy snow scene like this one here. Um, and uh, look at all the colors in the snow. A lot of blues, kind of some lavenders. And of course the snow white and it's got a yellowy tint to it, I think, kind of right in here. Maybe a little yellow. So, um, Nice thick layer of snow. Looks like there's a little creek there running in the middle of it. So, and, and I like the shadows and stuff. So I thought this would be fun. And um, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, there's my reference. I think I'm gonna start just composing the scene here. So I'm kind of looking at it. I can see the distant snow bank back in here going across kind of the top of the photo. We have some trees back there, which honestly is just gonna be a gray. Right, and we see how the landscape kind of slopes down into this little creek here, and kind of the creek widens out at the bottom bottom of the uh, picture, and then trees on the side. So let's start with the creek. I'm going to pull out a brown. Here's a brown. So this is new pastel, which is a hard pastel, right? Not oil. We're not using oil yet, and we're going to do the first layers in this. So I'm kind of going to use this brown. I'm going to put in where the creek is kind of going to be and it's uh kind of goes up to, up about right here okay and kind of widens out as it as it goes down down the scene and this is a very dark brown almost looks black here on the paper but um first layer here doesn't really matter it's more just kind of covering up the paper, composing the scene here. And I'm gonna widen this out as it, as it comes down here. All right, so right in here. Just kinda of give it your best guess on where that creek bed will be. And then down here, it really widens out kinda of all the way, most of the bottom here is gonna be dark. All right, and you can see what pastel mat does, it really holds in the pastel particles, so nothing really falls down here, which is one of the reasons why I like this paper so much. It really holds on to the dry particles here. So there's not a lot of dust coming down, which I really like for, for using dry pastels. And uh, just try to get in that dark here. The paper absorbs a lot. The downside to the paper absorbing a lot is it doesn't spread out very easily as it, um, where you put the mark is where the mark will generally stay. All right, so it's mostly dark in there. That's where the creek's gonna be. 
kind of that triangle shape there. That's kind of what I got there. All right, let's take a lavender. This is going to be kind of like an ultramarine lavender blue. And I'm going to draw in the, um, the distant snowbank up here. There's kind of a flat area up here. And that's going to be this section right about here. Okay. And then this part will be the gray distant trees in the back. Let's just make this, oops, and I only got this little sliver left here, so I don't want to, don't want to break this. One thing about new pastel is if you do drop it on a hard surface, it will shatter almost like glass. So you got to be careful when you're um, using it not to drop it on a hard surface, like a hard floor. Okay. Again, we're just worrying about covering up the paper, kind of generally composing the scene a little bit, finding just general colors to what I'm trying to convey here. All right, and then I think that's good. We'll, we'll, we'll make it look better here. Really just cover the paper up. All right, and we'll kind of spread that a little bit, smooth it out as best we can. Haven't played with new pastel in several, several months and haven't done a snow scene in quite a long time. So I wanted to try something different. Okay, let's get another blue here. Let's go with um, kind of a light sky color blue here. Just a light blue. Here, and I'm gonna go over the top of that and kind of lighten that up a little bit here. And then we'll do the sides. So if you look at the sides of kind of the foreground area. It's really just a lot of different blues here, some darker blues, and it's darker than what I'm conveying here, but I'm just gonna start with this, and then we can always go darker. But I just wanna cover that paper up, kind of where all that blue from the shadow is going to exist. Another thing I like about New Pastel is how long the sticks are. You can really cover up a lot of paper with one stroke like that. Makes it nice, makes it easy to work with. Okay. And again, we're just thinking about covering up the paper. Trying to cover up as much white on the paper as I can. All right. Okay, and then we're going to smooth it out with our hands here. And this is a messy medium, much more messier, I think, than the oil pastels but messy is fun. Okay, smooth it out. Maybe we'll cover a little more with the paper here. All right, I'm kind of looking at kind of where the snow is. Some of these rocks here are covered up, so I'm just kind of quickly putting those in. Again, just real quick. Don't think about it too hard at this stage. It's best to just go quick. Go with your first guess. It's usually the right guess. All right, now we're gonna come back in with this, um, what do you call that, lavender ultramarine color. And then we're gonna go back over the top and create this area a little darker as we see in the reference photo right there. Okay, a little darker blue. So we'll just go right over the top of that light blue. Obviously, I haven't used white yet because honestly, most of the snow is actually just shades of blue. Okay, all right. Now let's look at the distant ground, the distant area back in here. There's some, some distant trees in here, and that's really just a gray. So I'm going to grab a gray. Probably this one will be fine. Just a regular medium gray, and we'll just do this. the whole top gray. All right, I don't like, uh, in the, the beginning stage, it's all about covering the white of the paper. And just cover as much as you can. Just pick a color that's close and just go with it. Don't worry about the details at this stage. Okay, and then we'll just rub that in. So any gray will do for that, and we'll, we'll, we'll bring in the details later. 
All right, so here we have, we have the brown, kind of a dark brown, looks kind of black, like a lavender ultramarine blue, and then a light blue, and then a gray, and that's so far what we've used here. I'll put those right there. And I think I want a little bit darker blue here up in the front, so I might bring in a darker blue. Let's go with um, one of these here. It's just a little darker blue. Yep, that'll work. We'll just kind of get the foreground snow, sh shady parts of the snow a little darker. All right. We're going to use the, a gray and white to really define where the snow is at, but I kind of am worrying about more of the darkness of it, where the shaded parts are. Rub that around. Okay, now we have a tree. We have a tree that sits right about here. If you look at this reference photo, we got a tree here and we got a bunch of little trees on this side. But right now, let's get in this tree. It's kind of a pine tree right here. And the trunk of it's about right there, something like that. Okay. Trunk of it, and it's just going to go all the way up like that. Maybe I'll make it a little, little bigger, a little wider. Okay. Push that into the paper. Some of it will fall down. Don't worry about it. Just push that in. And then we have some branches here that kind of swoop down like this, kind of go across, right? Just real quick indication of some branches. Right, something like that maybe. And of course there's a bunch of snow and shadows here. We'll worry about that later. Now I'm gonna come over to this side here and the trunk color of those trees on the right, you can see very light gray, but I'm worried about more the darkness behind, behind those tree trunks here. Kind of a dark, dark blue or maybe a dark brown, maybe this dark blue here. Let's try, oh, this is a brown. That probably doesn't matter. I just need a dark value here. So we'll go with this brown. I'm going to create a dark area right here. Okay. And there's some dark parts all in the front of the um, foreground there where we have some gaps in the snow. Go ahead and put those in here. Just random. First guess is the best guess. Okay, a little bit of dark and rub that in. Got the tree there. All right now we can come back in with a lighter gray. Let's see, maybe this one. That's a light gray. Maybe I'm gonna choose a different one. I'm kind of looking at which ones here would be best. I don't have a lot of, a lot of these are broken and maybe just a yellow. We'll, we'll bring a couple of these out. So let's just put in some of these tree trunks here, kind of where the dark area, maybe some branches here that are coming out. Just real random, make it random. Okay, and a little bit more maybe right here. have those trees which kind of go like this there's one there kind of leans into it a little bit and we have ones that are next to it here All right and then kind of the, it's like a group of three right here and I'm gonna push those in kind of drag them down push them in All right and we have another one that's kind of right on the side here going up. And then we have a, some more here on this side going up. Another one right there and push those in. So put the mark in and then push it in. Okay, make them a little bit different sizes on each of them so they're not all the same. And we got this, well, this is like a, I guess like a medium blue. We're gonna go ahead and put that into it as well here. A little bit of that in there. All 
All right. Now remember, this is first layer. It doesn't have to be too exact on this, right? Because I'm gonna go over this with a oil pastel. We're gonna use the Paul Rubens. Haven't played with those in several months. So I'd wanna break them out again, play with them. I do like the Paul Rubens. Um, I think they're a fine oil pastel brand. I just don't like the um, greasiness that I felt on some of them or a lot of them last time I used them, but I'm gonna give them a second shot here. I do like them, They're, they are soft, which I like. I'm gonna bring in some branches here that kinda, kinda come out from some of these trees. This is a different gray than what I put down. So that was a very light gray here. And now I'm just kinda bringing in a darker medium gray, kinda the same gray I used back here and do some branches here that kinda come off these trees here. Okay. And I'm not exact on my um, reference as far as where these branches are, but just just put some in there, make it interesting, All right? It'll make sense later on. Okay, now let's go back over to um, this tree here, and I want to bring a dark green possibly, and let's try this one here, and then we'll use some of this brown again. So I need to kind of make this area a little darker over here. And we'll put in some of this green to see what that looks like. All right, this is kind of like a pine tree. Kind of the, the branches kind of swoop like this. All right, so I'm kind of conveying that a little bit and get some dark green in there. Kind of the foliage of the tree right here as it gets pretty dark. Here. Keep it loose. Go fast. I think fast is good. Fast, um, I think it's better rather than rather than um, thinking about it too much. You just just go with your first marks. You can always just add more layers if you don't like it. Okay, so maybe that tree kind of right in there, All right? And I left some of the blue in back there because. As I can see, there is some, some, some snow poking through the branches here. All right, now right above this snowbank, we do have a we do have a sun that's hitting this part up here. So I'm just going to take this white, this uh, light gray, and just go right over the top there, separating the gray from the blue here. Here, and now we're going to put in some of the brightness of the snow. So. Looking at again my photo, you can see how the landscape slopes like this, slopes down, right? Slopes down, slopes down, right? You see those angles? Slopes down, it all slopes towards this creek bed here, okay? So think about that when you're, when you're putting it in. Follow the landscape. If it slopes down, then your mark should slope down, okay? It really helps, trust me. Follow the landscape, follow the way the landscape goes, okay? Put some snow though this is a light gray so i'm not using white and i would recommend you just stay away from white in the beginning of your work right if you need a light color if you're trying to convey something that is white use a light gray instead okay that way um, if you need to go lighter you always can go to the white if you start with white and need to go lighter you're gonna you're gonna be stuck all right and then we have some some of the lightness in here it's a little choppy back in there. <clears throat> All right, get some of the snow. All right, I'm kind of doing these little kind of rounded little shapes here like this. Indicate some of the roundness of it towards the bank of that creek here. Again, light in some parts, dark in some parts. Over here, there's a little bit of sun coming through, so it's lighting up this area. And there's a bit of rock showing here, so we'll leave that there, a little bit more light down here. Most of this is just a blue, so I don't wanna do too much, but we do have some of the light as it comes in between these tree trunks here that kind of deposit light 
in certain spots here, so I want to convey that. All right, and notice how I'm rounding it down as it gets towards the bottom here. I'm kind of rounding it into it, into the creek bed here as it meets that. Okay. A little bit of stuff back in there. Again, first layer, I'm doing quite a bit for a first layer, but honestly, new pastels are really fun to work with. It's a very quick medium. You can get a lot done in just an easy stroke like I'm doing here. And I can do a whole painting in just using new pastel, which I've done before. Um, but I'm an oil pastelist for the most part. And so I like to finish most things off, pretty much everything off with layers of oil pastel here. So, all right, so I'm in the background here between the branches, I'm gonna put in some of this light gray again. Again, sloping the down, following the landscape down, okay? And then we're rounding it as it meets the creek. And there's a bunch of little snowy little rocks and boulders here in the creek, all right? And if you need to, you can always just take a finger and kind of change the value of the color or the mark just by doing that. You see, the stuff will break. It is brittle. Too much pressure will will break them. Right? But maybe that's why they gave you such a long stick to begin with, since uh, that does happen. Right? And then right in here, we have like a big rock here that's got a lot of snow on it right here. And there's some down in this area, too. So just a rough guess on some of these, some of the stuff. Again, I'm just rubbing it kind of getting the loose particle off the surface by doing this. You see, pretty much goes right on my hand here. All right. And right here. Okay, right in here. Some sun coming through certain areas and rounding it down as it comes right to that creek. Okay. Rounding it down. All right. And it kind of kind of disappears there as it goes back. All right. And then up here we have up in here we have a little bit of sky showing, so we'll just use the same light gray that I've been using down in the snow. We'll just put a little sky up in here, kind of peeking through the trees here, right at the top. I see it. Okay. I don't spend too much time on that. It's just a quick indication. And maybe in between some of the trees, we have some light coming through some light sky here, All right? We're pretending these are a distant set of trees, okay? All right. And then um, maybe we'll bring in a little bit of a brown. Gotta be careful on the values here. You notice my darkers are down here. I'm gonna bring a little bit of this brown up in here to indicate I do see a tree here, kind of a, another pine tree here. And uh, We'll play with the values of that later on as we go with the oil pastel, but um, I want to put that in there. And it does have snow on it, which is kind of cool. There also there also seems to be like a house or a cabin back in here. I'm not going to really worry about that. If you want to add a rooftop, you could basically just create, you know, a little shape of a roof like this, right? And then it's got like a chimney there, and I'm just using... The snow, maybe that's a rooftop back in there, like of a house here. Let's bring out a blue. Let me, let's give it a little bit of a different dark color there. Okay, just use your imagination. I'm just kind of seeing it there. I don't know if I'm going to keep it, but we'll put it in there for now. And then maybe some more darks in here, kind of some trees. Okay, again. Go over it with your finger, it changes the value of that mark here so it's not so popping forward. All right, don't lose that bank right there. Come back through it. And then uh, just continue on with your best guess as far as where these elements are going to be, where the sun hits, where the shade is. Just go with your first guess. Okay. 
And this is a rock, so I need a really dark here. And then um, maybe some lavender here on the shaded part, especially down in here. Okay. All right, and then um, I can only do so much with what I have. Do I have a black? I do have a black. This is black. All right, we're gonna use black here a little bit. I wanna get a little bit darker here in some of these areas. So as the creek kind of comes through, it has different um, elevations to it. And um, so we'll create a little dark area right there. Maybe a dark area on this rock here. Maybe on the sides here, where it's a little bit, seems to be a little bit darker. We'll just put a little black in there, All right? Black's very strong, very strong value. And um, I don't use it a lot in landscapes. I'll try to go with browns or dark blues, but um, with these new pastels, I'm kind of limited in what I have here. So I'm gonna kind of come in with some black and then to knock it back a little bit, I'm just taking my finger over it and so it's not so dark. So I guess use what you got, right? If you got black, if you're limited on colors, you can use a little black. Just, just really mark it with your finger so it's not so dark. Otherwise, it'll take over and change all your values. You don't have to adjust everything on it. Maybe some dark in there. Some darks here and there. Just really random. Okay, you can see how it's starting to build up here. All right. I don't want to go dark in here because that's further back in the scene. My darker value should, of course, always be towards the front, you know, the bottom here. That's that's where I want my darkest, darkest values at. All right, and then um, right on top, well, let's see if we have a little white. Let's bring a little white. So, so far we've just been using this gray. Let's bring a little white and um, the sun is really hitting some parts of this creek and creating a really bright reflection of that. And that's kind of right in here as the water here is not quite frozen. It's really, and it kind of falls down in here. All right, we're pretending this is water that's getting hit by the sun, different levels of it, especially right in here. Okay. This will make more sense when I get to the uh, oil pastels. I can get more detail into it. And I'll be able to, to make that look a little better. So this is the white and this was the light gray. You can see the difference between the white in my left hand and the light gray in my right hand. And I'm just gonna kinda come over again with some marks on top of that rock yeah right about there all right where's the black right at the base of it okay and then the white here okay white right there and water's level so these are going to be horizontal marks like that and i know it doesn't look like it now but that's basically going to be some water with some really strong light that is shining on it light oh, 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 oh. the sun's kind of back here and just coming straight down just just right here see that in my picture see the water that's water right there and it kind of comes down on the sides there's a lot of level there there's the so that's what I'm doing here. Okay, and then um, the water above it is just kind of this dark brown. And there's a little, there's like a tint of blue into it. So maybe we'll put a little bit of a blue right into it. Indicate that is supposed to be water cascading through it. Okay. 
really bright sun right in there, right in here. Now you gotta blow it off here a little bit. Sometimes particles will start to build up after a while as the paper is absorbing it. And so you just kind of got to blow that off a little bit or kind of knock it off or kind of do this and kind of drop those particles down. We are going to go over this with the oil pastel, as I've been saying. Um, and so I'll show you how to do that when we get to that step, but we're getting pretty close. I don't want to do too much here with um, the new pastel, but let's just see how much further we can go with it. doing snow it's a lot of fun all right now we're gonna get um some more shadow part of the of the snow right where here it meets the um this little creek here so i'm gonna bring in some of these uh what's this uh, ultramarine blue here kind of right at the base of that I want a nice deep uh, feeling of snow, right? Like a foot of it or something that's just kind of coming overnight and drop some snow there. Bring in a little yellow, like a lemon, very light, very light yellow. And I'm going to put this right up here and just see if we can actually get it to be a little bit of a yellow right here, right where the sun's really strongest. It's really bright right there. And this is kind of a cream. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a kind of a creamy butter yellow. So it's very subtle, but there is yellow in the in, the, in it. All right, some more rocks in there that are covered up. It's really thick. All right, a little bit of yellow where the sun is really strong. All right, and then uh, now the light back in here is not as strong as the light in here, right? Your light value is also dim as it goes further back in the scene. So keep that in mind when you're going through a scene. All right, but see where the sun's strongest right there. A little bit of a yellow right on top of that. Cream yellow. <clears throat> I'm kind of blown up that particles because they do start to build up and um, you also don't want to breathe this stuff in because it is, at times you'll feel like it's in your throat. <laughs> I'm not lying. One of the cool things about oil pastel is you just don't have that problem, All right? Okay, a little bit of dark in there. Right, so we're getting well into it here, and it's all just been new pastel at this point. But I think I'm gonna start switching over here to the to the oil pastel. I'm just kind of poking around. I think this was the white. Sometimes I get confused. Is it white? Is it gray? I think this is the white. Um, again, I'm just seeing where that water is, making some horizontal marks there. kind of cascades down on each side like that, All right? Just gotta use my imagination here, but I think it looks pretty good. Just trying to match that photo reference over there, All right? 
be interesting to see what the paw rooms will, will look like on all this and that will be fun. Okay, so let's go back up to the top here. Get some more light coming through some some distant trees back in there. There is snow on this tree. Maybe we can put a little bit of that on on it. So I'm just gonna take some of that some of this uh light gray and just kind of come in between the dark and look make these little kind of diagonal hash marks there. Indicate that oh, that's a tree with snow on it back in there. Maybe this one here. All right, some of the trees are a little bit closer. You can kind of put a little snow on that. Here, and I didn't put any snow on the branches here, so maybe we should do that. So let's go back to this green here and get some more foliage on it. Some more darks in there. Is that my black? I didn't want to use black. I want to use the brown. Black and, this black and brown look very close, so I just grabbed the wrong one. Okay. Kind of the pine needle look on the tree. Okay. And then um, let's get some snow on it. So let's see. Oh, got a phone call, guys. Great. Just had a quick phone call here, so I'm back, and I also try to clean up my hands a little bit. So my wife, Sarah, accidentally left this lid open for several days, and it's kind of dried out my wipes, so they don't really clean as good as I want them to, but oh well, I can still use them. So just need to clean up a little bit of that dust and make sure I close this. Okay. All right, so we were working on this tree. We're gonna put a little snow on some of these branches, right? All right, so let's do that. Let's bring in snow on top. And I'm just gonna go in right over the top of that here, here. I'm pushing into the paper to get a nice thicker mark on it. Okay. some snow on these branches here and there's like a big part of it right there I feel like I got some dust particle on my nose um, let's go with a oh, I don't really have a lighter gray we'll have to just use this it's fine we'll just kind of go over that with our finger to kind of knock the value of it a little bit different here because this part's getting a lot of sun in fact I might come with a little white here and kind of get it a little brighter there here, where, it's, where is the white? Is it this one? I think it is. It's hard to tell. It's starting to all look the same. There, it's a little. It's a little brighter. Okay. Same over here. We're gonna put a, a little bit of white on some of these. They're kind of sticking out right on the top there. Right where the snow would kind of collect on top of those branches. Here and then, um, and then inside where the shade apart, it is really just a blue. But I don't know if this blue is quite the right one. Maybe this, um, maybe the sky color blue would be actually something I could use for that. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty good. It's basically snow in the shade. All right, so just kind of make some marks in there. Right. random and then down here a little thicker okay snow and the shade and maybe the same thing over here I'll just use this light um, sky blue for that If I need to, I'll go over it with a little bit of a light gray here, maybe to brighten it up in some parts. All right. And in there, kind of just looking at my reference there, kind of trying to follow it. Yeah, not to be exact.
right, we need a little bit of a dark there. Where's that brown? Is that, that's the black, here's the brown. Here, and um, that yellow, which is kind of right, what I put in there, I'm gonna kind of drop it right here. Create a little bit of a light and shadow effect with it. ready to start with the oil pastels here um i just like playing with the new pastel so i'm kind of keep <laughs> going with it but i think we're ready for it all right so yeah this is new pastel guys and it is a lot of fun it is a dry medium it's kind of a hard pastel um i used to be able to get these open stock at the art store but they stopped carrying them open stock and now i just have to buy whole sets which is not cool I don't like doing that. It's kind of a waste of money. So I had to buy open stock online, which is not the funnest thing to do, but it is what it is. All right. But yeah, you can use any hard pastel with oil pastel. So long as the hard pastel is the first layer, you don't want to go oil pastel and then hard pastel on top of that. That won't work. All right. So start with a soft pastel or a hard pastel, a dry pastel, right? Do the whole scene like I have here. Um, you can do as much as you want. You can totally complete it like this. And then if you want to fine tune it or you want to play with the oil pastel, put the oil pastel on top, on top of the dry pastel. Okay. Don't do it the other way around. It will not work. You'll have a unstable painting. If you do it the other way around, it just won't work. All right. And uh, I'll show you how to use the fixative on this before we start with the oil pastel, because you do not want to use um, oil pastel on this without a workable fixative in between in between the two mediums, okay? I've done that before. I've, I've thought about what that would look like, and it is a huge mess. What ends up happening is the oil pastel starts to get clumpy and gets real dirty, and it's just damn near impossible to get a stable painting and then the oil pastel kind of clumps with all the dry particles and starts falling off and then your oil pastel gets sticks get really messy and it's just it's no good <laughs> it doesn't work all right so I've made that mistake actually it was more of an experiment I just want to see if it was possible without a fixative and it is definitely not possible you can't get a stable painting okay so we're going to put a workable fixative on this, and then uh, we'll start with the Paul Rubens. So I'm just playing around, All right? You don't have to keep doing what I'm doing if, unless you really want to, but it's fun. And right, I can kind of fine tune things here and there with this, All right? It's all about having fun, trying new things. Remember the slope of the landscape as you go through stuff. All right, let's go ahead and put these guys down. So I kind of been categorizing or, or um, organizing them by color, as you can sort of see there. Let's see, these are my darks there, my brighter colors there, green right there. All right. And I dropped a little one, but that's all right. Okay. Yeah, that's good. All right. And um, I'm going to clean my hands here a little bit <laughs> with whatever these, a lot of the moisture from the wipes kind of dried up. So they're very dry. It doesn't really clean my hands all that great anymore. I got to go get another, some more wipes here. All right. That's good enough. Okay. So let's look at it. That's a good start. Pretty much a finished painting, essentially. I like the vagueness of the new pastel. There's my reference. So we're going to play with the Paul Rubens on top of this, see what that looks like. But before we do that, I'm going to put a workable fixative on this. So I'm going to move my iPad because I don't want to spray my iPad with it. 
And uh, where's my workable fix? Here it is. So I recommend a workable fixative. Um, to and we're gonna we're gonna knock this a little bit, kind of. So if there's any loose particles, you can kind of do this. It'll kind of drop down. Okay. All right. And normally I do this outside, but um, it is raining today, so I can't do that. And I'm just going to kind of hold my breath while I spray and then get out of my studio here. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my workable fix here. This is one by Krylon, workable fixative, okay? And uh, we're going to spray a little bit on there and then let that sit for you know, five minutes or so. Come back, we'll touch it, we'll see if it covers it enough, and then we might have to spray again. But right here, I'm going to hold my breath, okay? And about maybe a foot away. Okay, so I did wait a good five minutes, and I'm come back, and I'm just kind of touching the surface and um, see a little bit of that particle, that dry particle, show up on my finger. So I'm going to need another layer of workable fix on this. All right, so that's okay. Let's go again with it, and I'm going to hold my breath again. Right, so that was another five minutes. Let's go ahead and test it again. So I, I cleaned my hands this time. And so let's test it. I'm just gonna rub it across and see that particle coming up. So I want a little bit more coverage from the fixative, right? Because I don't really want that mixing in with my oil pastels, okay? So just a little bit more. I think one more final layer will be the trick. All right, here we go. All right.